What is up, nerds? I'm Wes. And I'm Aaron. We're Never Board Gaming, and today we're taking a look at Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef from Druid City Games. Part 1. <laughs> As pretty as this game is, it is important for you guys to know that this is still in prototype form. Everything here is not final. Some rules might change. There's definitely going to be some components that change because mm -hmm. this is a Kickstarter video. So that's that's how these work. Yeah, we've actually seen things change just in the amount of time that, you know, as long as we've known about this game, things have changed. Like, it actually used to be a true worker placement with actual meeples and you know, it's changed. Now it's discs that you drop off along mm -hmm. the way showing where you've been. So. And these are standees that possibly minis in the Kickstarter. We yeah. don't we don't know yet. So Tidal Blades is a dice rolling worker placement game that is very focused on character enhancement. You mm. have four tracks that you are going to be leveling up which will help you on your adventures. And the whole game is set over a week where you are all training and you're trying to do the most training to become the best hero of the reef. Yeah, there's a tournament going on, and you go to different places to train, but there's also this like rift, and there's a barrier put up by the elders to keep monsters out, and that's breaking down. Some monsters are coming in. So while you're training, you all have to fight off monsters. So all kinds of craziness. So there's four tracks we're talking about. There's the spirit, focus, resilience, and synergy. They all have different effects on your gameplay. The spirit is used for the spirit cards that you'll get they have you know the higher your spirit the better the effect of those cards are focus is how many dice you can roll resilience is how many dice you can upgrade at the end of the round when you refresh your dice and the synergy is actually your character cards so besides just having these four tracks you actually have asymmetrical player powers that you unlock as your synergy gets higher. And speaking of upgrading, also your dice upgrade throughout the game. So you start off with just the really basic, generic white dice. They're okay, I guess. And then from there, it splits off into red or blue. So just the basic solid red, solid blue dice that just have the symbols within that color. So red has focus and spirit, spirit and blue has synergy and resilience and then as those upgrade they basically just become better they have some options that are like either or symbols so you have a better chance of getting them and then they go even farther into guild dice you actually pick a specific symbol and this dice is now all about that one symbol so if you roll it you're almost guaranteed to get it or even two of them if you're trying to complete one of those challenges or if you're fighting a monster rolling these guild dice can give you two uh completions or two successes in that specific type so if you're like okay i really need folk you know the focus icons or i really need the spirit icons to go up, come up i'm gonna go into that guild and get that guild dice to use mm -hmm. so there's a lot of upgrading yeah. you're upgrading your stats which is like your tech trees on your board you're upgrading your character abilities which is not like level one ability level two they're at least at this point they're all just kind of out there and as you upgrade you get to draw a certain amount of cards pick which upgrade you're going to use this game you're also upgrading your dice as you go along that's another really cool thing and i think the last thing you're upgrading it's not really an upgrade but as you complete these challenges you're going to get little symbols in the bottom of each of the cards and when you go fight those symbols are going to give you additional dice in that challenge because a lot of places, when you roll your dice, they're not gone. Well, there, there's a way for them to go away. But for the most part, they just go to your spent pool so that at the end of the day, they can still refresh. You can go places to refresh them and upgrade them and all kinds of cool stuff. But when you fight a monster, whether you kill it, whether he kills you, wh whatever happens there, the dice you commit there are gone. So getting additional dice for that fight is really, really cool. So the way the board is laid out, it's kind of modular, and there definitely is design space where they could change out the islands and ha or have other islands kind of pop up where you can go and do your worker placement. But they're really interesting. Every island kind of has its own feel. They have their own unique thing that you can do with them. Uh, when you place on a space, there's an immediate reward. It's like, okay, I get, I get an, an, a fruit, which is like these little oranges, or you get shells, or you, know, you can refresh dice. But also, just by going to the Droska ring, I get to, I have the ability of purchasing cards f from this uh, market, which can give me extra dice or more shells. If you go over to like the stadium over there, every time you take one of the spots, so you know, it'll give you a reward, but also it'll advance this little uh, boat around the, the 
the stadium and wherever the boat passes or lands you get those rewards so there's like all these extra options mm -hmm. and on top of that when you're at a location or at least one of the three locations you can't do it if you're fighting a monster or if you're at the citadel of time which is kind of like the main area so three other locations you can go to you could also complete challenges there which we talked about challenges earlier so every challenge has a location assigned to it so basically the challenges are thing they're very thematic capture the crab Perfect. So for this challenge, you need to go to the Chronosium and then capture a crab while you're there. So you're going to go there. So let's say I'm playing as Echo, which is the Oxalotl. So I'm going to go here to the Blade Advisor, which is going to give me a red dice. And then I'm going to say, okay, now that I'm here, oh, I also get to take one of the cards while I'm there because that's the static ability of going to that island. At the end of that, I can say, okay, now I'm going to complete a challenge. I'm going to try to capture the crab. So every card has the location on it, and it also has what symbols you need to roll. And then I can roll dice according to my focus, focus. level, which we talked about earlier. That's why you want to level that one up, because there's two symbols in this one, but there can be even four symbols on a card. So if there's four symbols and your focus is at two, you only get to roll two dice, there's no way you're going to get it. Unless well, spend maybe, fruit. Well, yeah, you can spend fruit to temporarily like Increase. focus up or get strength really quick to roll extra dice. Or I guess if you had guild dice with doubles on it or something. Mm -hmm. Regardless, you want the focus ups so that you can roll dice to complete the challenge. When you get the challenge, you get to, one, capture the card and have that symbol for when you go fight monsters. They're all worth victory points at the end of the game. And wherever the Elder t Blade is, if you complete a challenge where he is, you also get to go up a spot on the champion track, which is worth victory points at the end of the game. There's also spots where you get things for leveling up to certain points in that track. So there's a lot of things with challenges that you want to do and reasons why you want to complete these. Yeah, and completing one of each challenge type from you know one of each island will give you an additional five points. So that's very valuable as well. So, you know, you're getting two points, two points, two points, and a five. 11 points right there. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter how hard the challenge is, which is one thing that's interesting. Like, there are challenges that only require one success, and then mm -hmm. there's challenges that require two successes. They're both worth two victory points. But each success that you get is one notch that you'll move up on that certain skill. So, you know, this is a synergy right here. Uh, if I complete it, I move up one on the synergy track. Also, the monsters, if you look at them, they have the same symbols on them. So if you actually go fight monsters instead, you will still level up your tracks while you know losing those dice. I'd say they're kind of like the troll in uh, Champions of Midgard, where it's like if nobody does anything about it, people are going to get punished. I mean, mm. there's kind of a, there's a chance that nothing's going to happen because you're going to roll a dice to see if that you know which one of the monsters attacks, and if you roll a one neither of them attacks but if you haven't hit that monster you haven't done any damage to it and it attacks it, it, it'll do something detrimental to you. you end up losing dice or losing cards from your hand so you don't want that to happen so there's kind of this like okay well i need to go fight it because i don't want the bad thing to happen but also mm -hmm. the rewards are pretty good you you know usually it's you know moving up some track or gaining dice so you're losing dice but you're gaining dice and you're you're getting you're advancing the tracks by also battling against those monsters. Which... And I, I do like that with the rewards for that, it's not like, there, there's definitely a reward for being the person to kill it. But let's say there's eight damage on a monster. So you have to do eight different things to them, and you just go and poke them with a stick and do one damage. You still get the rewards for it, which is great. You just don't get the um to move up on the champion's track for dealing the killing blow. Mm -hmm. I well, also, you could, you could uh, that little poke could be the last damage to him. I also really like what's a little bit different than the trolls in Champions of Midgard, because in that game, somebody has to go fight the troll or we all suffer. In this game, if everyone goes to fight him and I don't, they all get to avoid the bad stuff, but I still take it. Or if Aaron's the only one that goes and fights him, he's the only one that avoids the bad stuff. So it's not like we're all just sitting there like, I'm going to do this, because I think Aaron's going to probably go deal with that. Mm -hmm. It's if I don't deal with it myself... I'm going to get the bad stuff. There's also one dice that you're going to be rolling in this game that you don't want to roll, but you have to. This entire island, I guess, is dangerous because you have to roll this danger dice every time you roll. So, you know, say I'm ta taking on a challenge or fighting the monster. I, have to, I roll my dice and I roll this danger dice with it. If an X comes up, that means 
it's going to cancel out one of my dice. If I'm just going for a normal challenge, it's fine. I can, as long as I you know, was successful, I can you know lock in. I'm like, okay, I got all the icons I needed. It's fine. Mm -hmm. The X will then delete one of my dice and it'll go back to the common pool. Yeah, not only does it cancel it, it actually is going to kill one of your dice. Yes. But you can spend one of your seashells, if you have one, to block that that damage from the the danger dice and it actually goes on to one of your cards which is called your your shell shell shield, shield which is another really cool aspect that i'll get to in a second you cancel it out and you don't lose the dice say you roll and you don't get the icons you need but you did roll that x you either have to lose a dice if you want to re-roll or cancel it with a ship with a shell if you are really unlucky in this game you constantly are rolling the x's and you're like oh man i have to you know i have to keep spending these shells and spending these shells they go onto your shell shield and once you have five shells that you've spent in that way you can use them to upgrade one of your tracks so it's kind of like a, a catch-up mechanism in a way yeah having really bad die rolls you know five of those bad die rolls where you had an x that equals one increase in one of your tracks so it's a really cool little... There are definitely times where you almost want the X to come up. Because I've got like 10 shells here. I really want to start rolling Xs just so I can get it on my shield upgrade thing. So I feel like we talked a lot more about how the game works than we typically do in Kickstarter videos. Our goal was not to explain how to play the game because there's going to be three, four, five, ten other videos on this page that do that exact thing. Part of the reason why we're explaining so much in this in this video because there there is a lot going on in Tidal Blades, but I don't want that to scare you away because once you get into the game, like you're definitely going to have a learning game starting off, but almost every game you are. However, once you get through your first game or your first couple rounds even, the game just makes so much sense. That's the biggest thing I can say to it. The thematics, the world building, everything in this game meshes together so well that it just makes sense as you're playing it. It's like, I go here, what happens? I feel like it should be this, and that's most likely what it's going to be. This game almost has like an RPG style feel to it, mm -hmm. like a video game RPG where you're like, okay, I'm going here and doing this thing, I'm getting rewards, I'm upgrading these skill trees, these tech trees, these dice trees, there's just... Like you said, a lot going on, but it does kind of flow and make sense if you're used to that style of thinking, you know, in a game where you're like, okay, if I want to get to this guild dice, what do I need to do? Well, I need to upgrade red, then upgrade it again, and upgrade it again. Mm -hmm. Like, makes sense. But you're like, okay, well, how do I do that? Oh, I need to increase my resilience so I can upgrade dice faster. Well, how do I do that? Well, I need to go do some missions or the you know these challenges that increase my resilience and i'm like okay well where can i do that okay i need to go to this little this little icon right here oh that's that island over there okay i'm gonna go there i'm gonna get something for going there and then i'm gonna attempt this challenge increase my resilience and then at the end of the end of that day i'm gonna upgrade my dice and i'm on my way towards bigger and better things and it's just it is a lot but it like just flows and it's just mm -hmm. it's awesome it's it's i kind of want to say this is my favorite game of this year even though this game isn't even out yet one of the things i think that makes it so good is the game doesn't beat you up i think so many games like you go here oh this bad thing happens oh you go here oh this thing sucks and oh your life is just garbage and you hate yourself and it's a constant struggle against the game board this game is really very friendly Everywhere you go gets you something. I love that whenever you go somewhere, like just going to an island, some kind of thing happens. So either the boat moves and you get something, or you can buy something or get a fruit, or over here you just get one of these cards, no matter where you land. Mm -hmm. Every spot has an additional thing you gain on it, so that's part of the decisions you make. But like, let's say this boat right now, all these spots are taken. I could still go there. I can still go there. I would move the boat, get that thing. I could do challenges there. I just don't get the additional benefit of going to one of the spots. So, like, there's no blocking out, like, mm -hmm. oh, you need to complete a challenge here to get the, you know, the third symbol in that set. We're all going to go here just to keep you out of it. it. That doesn't happen in this game. Mm -hmm. And even, like, with a dice, you can reroll as many times as you want as long as you have the shells. I feel like... They almost do everything they can to help you out in this game. 
not saying it's easy because it, everyone's helped out equally, but there is no like, gosh, this game is just, I'm just getting obliterated right now. This is stupid. Every, every card I draw is a bad thing happening and every card you draw is a good thing happening. No, almost everything is good. It's just how good can you make it? Can you time your challenges to land where the Elder Title Blade always is? Can you like use your dice well enough that I need to complete this challenge, this challenge, and this challenge? What dice should I put where, and where should I go to collect certain dice to make it the best game possible? Every game we've played, the points have been kind of close, even if we've taken different paths. The last game we played, I was probably the only one that really attacked the monsters mm -hmm. and I was able to put 12 hit tokens out there and you know get 12 victory points just from attacking monsters even though I didn't kill them every time I just like get my damage on there and they'd run away and I'd still get the points for doing it you know an average score of like 50 to 70 for us mm -hmm. 12 victory points is a big deal mm -hmm. big deal and then you know collecting sets like what Wes was really focused on going you know every turn he wanted to complete a challenge so he was trying to get as many dice as he could he'd go to an island he would attempt a challenge and hopefully have enough shells and enough luck and actually pull off those challenges and then score them and collect the sets and all those sets he collected were lots of points too so I feel like it's there's enough points spread around it's not like a point salad it's not like tons of things to get everywhere mm -hmm. but. You know, it's very focused on, okay, either you fight monsters, you do challenges, or, you know, there are certain ways to move up on this champion's board besides just fighting in front of the Elder Blade. You can actually, there's a couple cards you can purchase or uh, on the, the, boat. the boat thing. If it, I'm on a boat! You can just move up on the track. So if you can't tell, Neverboard Gaming highly recommends this game, and we really suggest that you pledge to back this game right now, help stretch this game and get it through as many stretch goals as they can mm -hmm. find and you know just flesh this game out make it even bigger and better than it already is like i am super excited for this game i'm backing it day one and you should too there's going to be a link to the kickstarter campaign in the description box or in the card pop it up up here or if you're already on kickstarter that's where you're watching this video you can definitely scroll back up hit that nice big green button give them all your credit card information and then you should be golden oh and make sure you tweet about it too there's a little like tweet after you back it yeah. like that's always that helps them out do that too either way you should subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored mr cuddington i think it sounds like a bear like <laughs> cuddly <huh? laughs> yeah he's just like a cuddly bear cuddington <laughs> it's like here's some toilet paper wait what <laughs> is this a commercial for charmin <laughs> <laughs>